Another fun fact about South Central Cartel is that if it weren't for West Coast acts like them, Warren G, J.O. Felony, Montel Jordan, if it weren't for acts like them signing to Def Jam Records, Def Jam, by most accounts, would have went under. They would have been out of business. The West Coast literally saved Def Jam Records. When we done this new album, Russell Simmons let us go in the studio and do exactly what we wanted to do. He didn't, he didn't come in there and have nobody overseeing us of nothing. We went in there and we done the album that we wanted to do and he loved it. So if Russell Simmons loved our album, then we doing something right. Um, I introduced myself, I bust. I, I, I kill it, man. I think I went for like, man, I don't even know how long I went for. I think I just zoned out and just went, man. And I killed it. After I killed it, Russell Simmons called my brother back at home because Russell Simmons was listening. We was on promotional tour, so the record companies was monitoring everywhere we went. Uh -huh. He called my brother. Like, man, who is that? Because Russell didn't, I never met Russell. Russell had never knew who the fuck I was. I, I was nobody. So Russell called back, was like, man, who was that freestyling on the radio? Pride telling, man, that's my little brother. That's young prodigy. Russell, like, I want to sign him. Tell him he got a deal when he get home. You feel me? Damn. Now, I get home, I got a record deal. Simple as that, man. It's like my second deal on Def Jam at 17. Yeah. I was the only niggas, I was the only, pretty much, I don't know too many other niggas who signed three deals on Def Jam. You know what I'm saying? Before they 20s. When I signed to Def Jam, Def Jam was still, that was the shit. About the time when SEC dropped in Gats We Trust, I, I was already signed to Def Jam. I was um, working on my record. Pretty much almost finished with my record. SEC drops in Gats We Trust. Russell Simmons tell him, you know, put Young Pride on the album. To, you know what I'm saying? To, to, so we can drop. Basically, that was my, I would have piggybacked off in Gats We Trust. And bam, y'all got Young Pride. In the process, I think so Def Jam had went through something with Sony. You know what I mean? And um, they switched over to Sony, the Universal, or Universal to Sony, whichever way it went. Mm -hmm. And that had put, you know what I'm saying, SCC in, 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 in a fucked up situation. But it, it didn't really happen until after I signed. I think, you know what I mean? I was um, two deals in. By then, I was a young prize solo. And we had the evil side deal, which was me and Scheme. Scheme is the scheme. Uh, uh, came out on he's on the move with Pride Mill. See, Russell Simmons was like when it came to our camp. That's how I see it. Now, you know what I mean? He when he heard somebody that was dope and, and, and it was worthy, Russell Simmons snatched him up and he snatched Scheme up like bam. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, like man, and, and when he snatched Scheme up, he came up with some idea that you know put Scheme and Young Pride together, let them do a record. That way, that that catapult Scheme in. Mm -hmm. I come off the SEC, then we drop Young Pride. Scheme come off the evil side, then they drop the Scheme out. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. shit was just set up, man. But then once once business start taking a uh, change of 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 um, I guess distribution, you would say. Mm -hmm. You know, shit got caught up. Russell Simmons uh sold, start selling, uh, sold his part of the company or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um. And we really didn't have too much backing besides Russell Simmons at Def Jam. Uh, we had a couple of guys, uh, Mike Kaiser, John Stockton, uh, these people who really looked out, you know what I mean, for us. But for, other than that, we didn't really have no backing, man. We was West Coast and we was on, you know what I'm saying? We, we was on the East Coast label. There's, there's no other way to cut Def Jam. They're East Coast label. It was a great place to be. You feel me? As, as an MC. I feel very at home. You know what I mean? Being in Def Jam. That's that's where the greats come from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You feel me? But being image wise, um, understanding who we are wise, uh, accepting the personality wise, because East Coast and West Coast cats got two different personalities, mm -hmm. two different ways of, 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 of going and doing things. And that's it. SEC didn't blend with Def Jam culture. It wasn't just Warren. Yeah, Warren had the biggest album, but we can't forget Domino. Domino went double platinum. Montel Jordan went double platinum over there, bro. This was the Def Jam West, you feel me? Had uh, BG Knockout with Gangsta Drace over there, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The twins, they went gold to platinum, man. You know what I'm saying?
Yeah. It's like it, it, it was it was it was a, the West Coast itself was a revitalization at that moment. The whole West Coast uh, integration. Uh, 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 um, J.O., you know what I'm saying? Oh, was Def yeah. Jam West. The whole integration of what the West Coast did had revitalized Def Jam. Yeah. We was all hot artists. Only reason why this shit, I, I, didn't, I, I mean, you don't get the uh, longevity out of a lot of it because you got a bunch of A&Rs who really don't know what to do with this sound. Don't forget about Moke and Steph. That's right. They was over there, bro. The female Why group. Envy? Why Envy was over there, bro? It, it, it was groups. Mm-hmm. Bomb ass groups that was popping back then. Def Jam West. You feel me? Richie Rich was Def Jam West, bro. Something about the West Coast. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, look, man. It, 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 Def Jam, though. You feel me? Yeah. It's like that part of Def Jam. And we brought life. That was life, but people don't know that. Look how you can mention when I say a name, you, you come up with their singles. You yeah. know, yeah, that was valid. Off top. But we don't get that. We don't get that, that that respect, bro. I'm glad you cleared that up, man. Yeah, I'm glad and, you cleared that up. And I don't hear a lot of rock and, 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 and no 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 bullets at nobody. But the West Coast niggas who be on work on Def Jam don't speak on that. They speak on it individually, like man, individually. But together, it's the reason why they kept signing mother. Because if, if these West Coast groups would have been felling, they wouldn't have signed so many West Coast artists. You guys all know Coolio's Gangster Paradise song, right? Sing it with me. Been spending most our lives living in a gangster's paradise. I've been spending most our lives living in a gangster's paradise. Tell me why. All right, I'm going to knock it off. But did you know that the dude who sang the chorus for that song, a guy by the name of LV, was an original member of South Central Cartel? Well, at the time, you know, when we did our last Def Jam album, LV was with that Coolio thing. Mm. So LV was the guy. Right. He All was right. on Sky High status. LV was yeah. the OG. He was OG before uh, before Date Dog. Man, he was the first. I heard him say, you know, LV was the first singing on a gangster rap. Right, right. You know, I mean, far as Mill. inside the group. Right, 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 right. Inside the group. Right. You know, he was the first part member that was a singer in a gangster rap group that I could think of. I can't right. think of. And then Nate Dog came and right. shut the shit down. Right, right. You know what I mean? But LV was doing it before that. Okay. You know what I mean? I want to make sure y'all understand. Coolio was on LV's Gangsta's Paradise. Ah, so it was LV song. song. That's LV song. Yeah, Just even. politics. Honestly, that was Big Pride and LV, but Big Pride turned it down. He felt Coolio would have been a better match. At that moment, he seen something greater with Coolio and LV and let that be. Only real niggas do that, bro. Only real niggas give opportunities and let other sh- other people shine where they will be better off shining at. Yeah, yeah. But that was LV song, bro. It's just you know, I, I, it's it's one bad um bad taste in my mouth about that. And I just, I'm just an honest cat, you know what I mean? It ain't nothing against nobody. People take it how they want to take it. I just didn't like the way when my nigga won a Grammy, he ain't say shit about SEC. That that always hurt me. That that's gonna always hurt me because it's something you can't repeat. You can't you can't fix that. 